The entrance of God's word gives light and it brings understanding to the simple. Even as you're about listening to this message by the man of God, we hope that the light of God's word will be shed abroad in your heart. You will know what to do and you will know how to live. And so if you're new to this channel, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this message. Also go to the comment section and comment whatever you have learned. Share this message abroad because we won't always be a blessing to the world. Thank you. So in the true worship of God, we will see the Father. When you truly worship God, you will have a, an exact revelation of the Father. The Father seeketh such to worship. The Father. True worship is to see God as the Father in reality. To see God as the Father in reality. It's not a feeling. It's not an experience. He is the father. So Moses gave them a temple. That's why the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews 12, 29, for our God is a consuming fire. <laughs> for our God is a consuming fire. What is he talking about? He says the things that are of the earth will be taken away. Only the things that are of heaven will remain. In other words, all the things of worship in the Old Testament temple has been consumed by the love of God. That consuming fire has consumed the sacrifice. It has consumed the entire Levitical priesthood. It has consumed it out of the way. When he said our God is a consuming fire, he was not talking about fire that consumes people. He was talking about fire that consumed all the Old Testament offerings and sacrifices and consumed all that the Old Testament demanded of man. He has consumed the law. It does not exist in our conscience, conscience anymore. He said, let us now therefore serve God with grace, not with things. We don't serve God with things anymore. We serve God with grace. We are receiving a kingdom that cannot be removed. Let us therefore serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Jesus has made room for us. And has made room for the Father in us. You are the temple of God. You know there are some churches in Nigeria, in fact in Africa as a whole, if they allow us to teach righteousness in that church through faith for one week, 80% of their members will not stay there anymore. If they allow us to teach the gift of righteousness by faith in Christ for one full week, men's eyes will open. Men's eyes will open. Because what is predominantly taught there is works. And when you understand the gift of righteousness, you start questioning things. Romans 8, 32. He that spared not his own son, but gave him up for us all. How shall he not also with him freely give us all things? But when they don't read it well, they'll say, brethren, God does not spare you. God never spares his sons. He disciplines his sons. It's like the pastor who read Colossians 1 13, who have delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and translated us to the kingdom of his dear son. Say that is why you need deliverance. You can read the epistles with a legalistic mindset. One read, Brethren, we which were once afar off. He said, Sometimes, brethren, we are afar. So we need to pray, draw me close to you. He said once. We were not afar twice. We were afar once and it's past. Which means we will never be afar. So the writer of Hebrews, after finishing with Moses, he said in Hebrews 11.6. 
Hebrews 11:6. But but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Do you know that they preach that to Christians, brethren? If you want to please God, or they will tell you, I bring a word from the throne of God. When they say that, the man is about to say rubbish. Please don't bring me a word from the throne of God. Bring me a word from the written word. Say, Lord, speak from above. Ah! Lord, speak from the written word. Hebrews 11.6 is not for you. But without faith, it's not, it's not possible to please God. It's not for you. You have already believed. You have already pleased God. That's for an unbeliever. That scripture is for an unbeliever. Let us draw nigh with a heart full of faith. It's not for you. You're already in him. That's for the unbeliever. He has already told you that your heart has been purified and purged from dead works. He told you that you are perfected. That's not you being cleansed and washed with water. You've already been cleansed and washed. But he, tell, he tells it to those who are to hear the gospel. These are the people he says in Hebrews, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? That's not you. We are already saved. He that cometh to God must believe. That's an evangelistic sermon. Without faith in Christ, you cannot please God. But to the believer, I say, we are come to Mount Zion. We are come to the heavenly Jerusalem. We are come to the spirits of just men made perfect. We are come to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. We have arrived. Glory to God. This is a holy place. This is God's dwelling place. Where is holy ground here? Somebody shout, I am God's holy ground. God does not do temple. God does me. You didn't hear that. This is the holy faith. Salvation makes you perfect. Paul is talking to people whose conduct is unbecoming. Listen, a Christian ought to grow and walk in the spirit. And Paul is saying to them, know ye not. In other words, their nature is perfect, but their conduct is not. Know ye not that you are. These are people misbehaving. He's reminding them so that he can bring them to a place of clarity in identity. Which means the reason why they are behaving funny is identity crisis. So he's reminding them, don't you know who you are? It's like when we used to be young and go to school. Our parents used to tell us, when you go to school, remember the name of the family you come from. Behave yourself. Remember, you are a damina. Behave like one. They are reminding us. Remember the kind of home training I gave you. Remember the kind of upbringing I gave you in this house. When you go out there, don't disgrace us. Our parents will pull our ears before we go to school. What are they doing? Reminding us who we are. So when Paul says, know ye not, he's reminding them in Corinth, remember whose you are. Remember whose you are. And remember who you are. And it's the same word Jesus said, in that day you shall know. Ginosko. You shall come to realize. Know ye not. So if you say a believer committing sin, you know the legalistic people are the most unforgiving people. They will tell you the soul that sinneth, it shall die. And you know legalistic people, they are very funny. They always operate the law because the law worketh wrath. They are always angry. Touch me by mistake. Die by correction. One man of God, one, one guy called me, you know, one of the time we're having phone call. He said, Papa, why are you always smiling and laughing when you are preaching? My pastor is always angry. What you are preaching will show in your countenance. How can you be preaching death and laughing? 
But you cannot be preaching life and frowning. Glory! 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 For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Who is free in this building? Stand fast in the liberty we are with Christ has set you free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage whom the son sets free you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but the spirit of adoption whereby we cry that's the cry of the spirit of God somebody shout glory we are so grateful for having you here on our platform. Kindly hit the subscribe button if you are new here. And also like this message for us. Do well to comment in the comment section because we want to know what you learned and where you're watching us from. Thank you, message community.